Last summer, I found myself with the life circumstances that would allow me to live anywhere. So after deciding that Costa Rica and Paris were a little impractical, I moved back to the city where I grew up, grew up, Buffalo, New York. I hadn't lived there in over 30 years, and the thing that brought me back was the fact that my father lives there. You could call me the extremely prodigal son. Now, my father likes to say that he's on the shady side of 80. He's doing pretty great for a guy with diabetes and heart disease and some other problems. He still drives and he's got an 88 year old girlfriend. My mom passed away 14 years ago. They are constantly on the go, attending the symphony and musicals and operas. He's doing great. Coming home again and renewing my relationship with my father has been a deep, deep blessing. Now, there are no perfect fathers except on TV and my father was no exception. He has regrets about the decisions he made that I know torment him still. The gift of the passage of time is that I've found the grace to understand some of the things he did and to, for, and to forgive him. For example, he had at times an explosive temper. In our house, he held the monopoly on displays of anger. Because of that, it took me years to figure out how to express anger productively and without shame. But I also understand how much, how much pressure he felt he was under supporting a family of six. He didn't go to law school until he was in his 30s, quite late for that time. And, and he was working as a border agent between the Peace Bridge, between Buffalo and Canada. He went to school full-time days and worked the bridge full-time nights so he could study, sleeping three or four hours a day for three years. I have no idea how he survived that. My father was a good man, and I could tell you a lot of different ways that he was a great dad, but I'll just say the thing that I think was most important. He simply wanted me to be happy. Now, I've done a lot of different, strange things for work. I've had plenty of setbacks and failures, and my father has always supported me. He's never questioned my decisions, even as I was questioning myself, and that has been huge. Coming home reminds me of that great saying by Mark Twain. He said something to the effect of, I went away to college for four years, and when I returned home, I was amazed at how much my father had learned. After being away for 30 years, when I returned home, not only did I discover how much my father had learned, I also discovered how generous he was. Not just now, but over the course of our lives. Now that I understand something of the kinds of hard decisions that adults have to make, I can appreciate so much more about what he did. I recently presided over a memorial service for a dear friend who was just a couple years younger than me. He has two daughters, 17 and 12, and it's unspeakably sad. His daughters are keenly aware of all the milestones that they'll go through without their father, graduations and weddings and childbirths. But I don't think they yet understand another real tragedy, that they will never get the singular pleasure of becoming friends with their dad after they become adults. That's such a great place in life. Now I get the opportunity to spend that time with folks who are a lot older than me, after years of living in hip neighborhoods in cities like Boston and Washington, D.C., where I only saw people between the age of 24 and 64, I'm getting away from the ghetto of ageism and reconnecting across the generations. Of course, this means that when I go out to eat with my dad and his crew, it's usually much earlier than I'm used to. Also, I'm getting very good at Pinochle. But I like Pinochle, and I love hearing the stories. And, and even more so than the reminiscing, I love hearing his take on things from the perspective of age. I mean, the guy constantly surprises me. And that's, and that's an example of the coolest thing about moving back. I get to bring my relationship with my old man up to date. We get to be together as the people we are today. Not from my childhood or teen years, thank God, but as we are now, and that's wonderful. I know that many people have very painful memories of their fathers or had no father at all. If that applies to you, I hope that you can find peace and that other, fa father, other father figures have shown up in your life. The blessings I'm talking about are not limited to fathers or even to biological parents. People 
People have father figures of many sorts during different periods of their lives. If you're not already doing so, I encourage you to seek your father figures out and stay in touch. You might be amazed at how much they've learned. Amen and blessed be.